Hello, this is Trevor again from Physics This Week. Let's talk about the coordinate system we use when we have an object on an incline. By the end of this little presentation, you should be able to draw the free body diagram of an object on an incline, and then be able to break the forces acting on it into appropriate components along convenient coordinates, and to use Newton's second law to determine the acceleration of the object on the incline. Once you have that acceleration, you can determine the acceleration, velocity, position, or time uh, for an object, and for the time being, we're going to look at this case without friction. Okay, so just a little terminology at first. In physics and in mathematics, when we talk about the word normal, we actually mean perpendicular. So if you have a system where you've got a nice flat surface like this, the normal to the surface is just perpendicular to the surface. If you have other directions or other locations, you're still looking perpendicular to the surface for this normal force. And it could even be a place like this where you normally wouldn't think to stick an object because you know it's going to fall straight down. In each case, those are the normal directions. And we could, in fact, add another one pointing straight down from the bottom uh, of this uh, ramp and incline type system. Okay, if we look at the free body diagram of an object, of course, in each of these cases, we would draw the force gravity on, and in all cases, those are actually equal to each other. If we look at the normal force, that normal force is going to be in the normal direction relative to the surface. So in this particular case, because the object is not accelerating, we can quickly determine that the normal force is actually equal to the gravitational force. If we look at the next situation, in this case, this force looks similar, but it's not quite the same as the gravitational force. The reason for that is this is now tilted, and there's going to be a net force down the incline, so this thing is going to slide, assuming that there's no friction here. If there is friction, you would have to look at the sum of the friction and the component down the plane, and determine whether this uh, object will actually move and then what acceleration it'll have. In this case over here, there is no normal force because there's nothing holding the object against the side of the plane. So if you just set it here, it will quickly fall uh, straight down towards the ground. Okay, if you look back in history, well before Newton was around, uh, people were looking at this law of inclined planes back in the 1500s. What they determined was that the shorter the plane, the greater the force pulling the objects down the plane. Now, of course, you've had fun with this in things like roller coasters or sliding boards, where you know that if you have a nice gradual slope, it's a lot easier to push objects up it, and they don't move as fast when they move down it. So if you look at the force acting down the plane, as you get a steeper slope, it looks like yeah, there's a larger force pulling it down the plane. Now, back in 18, yeah, 1586, people didn't think about gravitational force. But, of course, we do these days, so we know that it doesn't matter which direction the object's moving. The gravitational force is always equal, but if we break it into components, we find that this component facing down the incline gets bigger and bigger while the gravitational force stays the same. The other thing to notice is that the perpendicular component is getting smaller and smaller as you go. Now, it's convenient to break the gravitational force up into these components as I have here. And typically we call this FG parallel because it's parallel to the incline and FG perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the incline. Okay, so typically if we can rotate the coordinate system so that the object is moving along it, it makes our life a lot easier. So we've got an object sliding down an incline, we've got the normal force, we've got the gravitational force, we know which way it's moving. If we draw our coordinate system in the traditional horizontal vertical way, you draw the, the forces on there, that would be the free body diagram, but now we want to break it into components along that. And it turns out in this case, the normal force in the y direction, normal force in the x direction, of course, align nicely here, but they don't point in the direction that the object's moving. If we can get it all in that direction, it would be a lot easier on us mathematically. So let's just rotate our coordinate system. 
and redraw our components. Now this time I've drawn the gravitational force as a dotted line because I'm going to break it into components along that direction. And again, I'm going to label them as G perpendicular and FG parallel. Now, if we had not gone through all this coordinate system stuff and just drawn the two forces and used the parallelogram method to uh, see what the net force is, we would find out that G parallel, what we've called it up here, would be the actual net force that's acting on the object. The gravitational force and the normal force together don't quite cancel out, but the perpendicular component actually does. And we'll look at that in just a moment. So by putting their coordinate system in this direction, this net force is the only one that we need to find. Okay, so let's actually do that. We rotate our, our coordinate system. We break it into the appropriate components. And now we need to figure out what this angle is. Now, from the diagram, you might notice that this angle and this angle are written the same. I'm calling them both theta. The reason I can do that involves just a little bit of geometry. So if I draw a triangle down here, and I draw a line that's perpendicular to uh, the incline, notice both of these are right angles. I'm going to use information that I know about triangles. I'm going to throw in this angle phi here. And notice because in this triangle, I've got three angles. I've got 90 degrees, phi, and theta. They need to add up to 180 degrees according to uh, just standard Euclidean geometry. And then I can do a little bit of math, take the 90 degrees to the other side, subtract it. And I've got that phi plus theta is equal to 90 degrees. But over here, this angle is 90 degrees. So the angle all the way through here is also 90 degrees. So if I call that angle alpha, phi plus alpha is equal to 90 degrees. And if you look at the form of the equation and do a little bit of subtraction or combination, however you want to do it here, it turns it that theta is equal to alpha. Well, alpha is this angle right here as well. So this angle is also theta. So that's just a quick bit of geometry that shows us that this is the case. Typically in the setup of a problem, we just take that for granted that this angle is actually the same as that angle. And you don't have to go through this whole setup, but it's good to know where that comes from. Now you do need to be careful. A sadistic physics professor might give you the angle up here, and then you would have to sit down and figure out just a little bit of quick algebra to figure out what uh, angle needs to go into here. Okay, so now we've got things up. We have figured out information we need to know about theta. We've drawn our free body diagram and rotated the coordinate system appropriately. And just a quick note, I had this on the last slide, but I didn't say anything about it. You might be given this length across the bottom, which I'm just calling W, so I don't mix it up with my height of my incline. And you might also be given the length of the incline. You can use any combination of these guys plus the information down here uh, to figure out any of the other things. So you might be given the three sides. That means you can find the angle down here. So you might have to do a little bit of uh, simple geometry to get those. But let's set up Newton's second law. Okay, the sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to the mass times the acceleration. The only force that's acting in that x direction is Fg parallel. If we go from the vector equation to the algebra equation, it looks like that. And then using a little bit of geometry, we can tell that this side is opposite theta. Uh, remember, this is a parallelogram. So it's Fg sine theta is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And of course, you can throw in Mg sine theta is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And just like when an object's falling straight down, it turns out that the mass is irrelevant as long as there's no friction that's acting. If we look in the y direction, same type of things go on. We've got the normal force acting in the upwards y direction, the per perpendicular component of uh, the force of gravity acting in the downward direction. So we change it to an algebra equation. 
We know that this object is not accelerating off of the plane. So we know that in the direction of motion, it does have an acceleration, but perpendicular to that direction, it has none. So the sum of these two forces, or in this case, the difference because they point in different directions is equal to zero. That means that the normal force is equal to G parallel. Or again, a little bit of geometry tells us that this side is the adjacent side, so we use the cosine. One thing to notice here, if you have been slavishly learning that AX goes with cosine, you can run into trouble. In fact, I just needed to revise this slide because I made that same mistake. Always look at the triangle to figure out which goes with which. Okay, so in quick review, the mathematics of an object on an incline system is greatly simplified if the coordinate system is rotated to point down the plane. The net force on the object increases as the slope increases, and that's because this parallel component becomes larger as you tilt the plane. At the same time, that normal force becomes smaller and smaller. If there is no friction acting, then the net force is just FG parallel, and FG parallel is actually equal to FG sine theta, times the, is, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the X direction. The normal component is equal to the perpendicular component of the gravitational force, and again, using some simple geometry, that gives us FG cosine theta. Always watch your geometry here. Be careful of where the angle is. Hopefully this has been helpful. Have a good evening, and I'm Trevor from Physics This Week. If this has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or please subscribe below. Thanks.